something interesting is taking shape. Time is running out. It will be very scary for everyone once we break the old all-time high. What do we have now? During the bull run in 2017, there was a time when XRP passed Ethereum to the second spot. That's crazy, right? So it tends to do these things, right? Because of these things about XRP, it should be able to do this, right? Because the same things keep happening. At the end of the day, it's all the same. But guys, I found something even more interesting. XRP could do this again, right? That's what I asked myself, and now I'll ask you guys. Maybe during this bull run, right? After some time. Guys, let's take a look at this. I found something very interesting. XRP has been one of the top 10, right? Really, guys, for all time, for years and years and years, right? That's pretty cool, right? Isn't that a little strange? Other coins have come and gone. It's Bitcoin Cash, right? Stellar can be found below. Coinlight is also, I believe. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple have been in the top 10 for a long time, right? So this just tells me that there is someone who benefits from XRP, right? For this group of people and this kind of use. Why? They're keeping the price high so it doesn't drop below the top 10, right? That's pretty cool, right? Guys, it's clear that prices are managed to some extent, 100%. XRP fell a lot when the SEC went after Ripple. Why was it still in the top 10? Do you get what I mean? That's really interesting, right? Don't miss the next Ethereum back in 2017, right? That's what David Shore said at that time. Take a look at that. Now you know not to sell your XRP for $3. I think the best way to describe how I trade now is don't miss the next Ethereum. That's interesting. I mean, it did reach its highest point after about a week, right? XRP or more generally the whole crypto market. But he did say once, don't miss the next Ethereum. Where did Ethereum come from? I guess it depends on how you look at it. Where did Ethereum come from? In the range of dollars to thousands of dollars, right? Should we look at it in terms of price, then? Could that happen with XRP? When he said possible market cap, I think he meant market cap, since it did become the next Ethereum, right? So, guys, there has been some back and forth. The XRP needed to make a $1 million payment will always cost $1 million, right? That's why David Schwartz replied to this thread. David Schwartz said it couldn't be cheaper, though, right? since that is the case. Also, people are guessing, can XRP ever hit $100? To be honest, I only see it getting to $100 if it's useful, right? And I think the transition has to go well for the service to go live, right? We need to get to that new banking system and join it. There is no way for a bank to use XRP to send money through the right channels, like maybe in a CBDC in the future. It would have to be more expensive, though, because you would need a million XRP to send a million dollars. It doesn't make sense, does it? But if the price was higher, you would need less XRP, right? The amount of XRP you need will go down as it goes up, which will make it more useful. Guys, take a look at this, it's interesting. After 50 years, if Ripple still sends the same number of swift messages, 98% of XRP will still be around. It would take 70,000 years to destroy all XRP. Guys, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Wow. Guys, take a look at this post it's very interesting, promise. It really made me think when I read it. For this reason, hackers could hit Ripple just like they could any other network service. For example, in a DDoS attack, bad people might try to overload the network by making a lot of fake accounts or sending a lot of transactions that don't mean anything. Ripple needs a minimum fee of about 0.1 XRP per transaction to stop this from happening, right? So that this attack from bad hackers and other guys doesn't happen. Then, XRP changes the fee based on how many transactions are happening on the network. 
The goal of a fee that goes up over time is to stop someone from abusing the network by sending too many spam transactions. Nobody takes this transaction fee, it is erased from the ledger as soon as the transaction is finished. People may first think that all XRP will finally go away in this case. But based on the maths, this is not likely, guys. This is where things get interesting. If there are the same number of Ripple transactions every day as Swift messages, then 98% of all XRP will still be around in 50 years. What? Wow! At the time of writing, this fee is worth 0.17 cents, which is very little for most Ripple users. However, it stops hackers from sending a lot of spam in the form of thousands of small transactions. Guys, this is pretty much the opposite of inflation, right? It has a rate of burning. Guys, this is why it's in the code, XRP goes up over time, right? Now, Ethereum does the opposite of this, it makes more of it available. Can you tell the difference? Bitcoin goes down, XRP goes down, and Ethereum goes up. Guys, that's not good at all that it has rising rates, right? That is, in the form of a huge number of small deals, right? That's why they have this D, creating an account, putting an order in the order book, and setting a trust line all follow the same steps. If these steps aren't taken, bad people can do thousands of these things and flood the Ripple network with spam. But hold on a second. XRP can also be used as a birch currency for sets of currencies that are hard to sell. In theory, people who use Ripple can trade any valuable thing, like fiat currencies, virtual currencies, goods, shares, and even loyalty points. That is the real internet of value. For real, that's what tokenization means. Yes, crypto projects and coins will move into that new area, right? However, I think that XRP will get a big piece of that pie as we see all of this, right? That is just my view, it is not financial advice. On the ledger, all of these types of value are kept as debts to the producing gateway. One coin, XRP, can be bought and sold without a counter value. However, if Ripple grows and adds more currencies, the market maker and the gateway may not be able to handle all the currency pairs. The algorithm that finds the way should look at all of them, which could take a while. 